Welcome back, CSE 3200 Yukon Stores. We are going to begin our trek into a very long chapter. Chapter 12, dealing with coroutines and databases. We have a fair number of objectives. I'm anticipating uh, each of those objectives will be one video, but those videos might be fairly long. Uh, in this video, we are going to create our own coroutines using suspending functions. In this chapter, we're going to uh, create a database, which is um, the first time we've taken our data and stored it in a more meaningful place. Uh, GeoQuiz stored just the smallest amount of data, and since it was small, it seemed reasonable that we would completely encapsulate it within just a class. Uh, but when you have a large amount of data that you need to alter frequently, and it doesn't make sense to do that. So we are going to create a database. But uh, writing to a database is a slow process, which necessitates the need for asynchronous code. Asynchronous code means that code that can fire like simultaneously. It's strictly not simultaneously. It's more like there's such a small weight that there might be two different threads and they would just take turns firing, 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 firing. Um, so let's see. In, uh, in Java, my first experience with a thread was trying to do animations and graphics. And at first, um, when I just tried to run everything in a loop, like to make a something go like up a hill, imagine like uh, and some sort of icons going up a hill. Well, I would um, I'd see it here maybe, and then I would suddenly see it appear up here. And the reason is is that we have the you know the image where that is currently rendered when the program starts, and then all of my drawing is happening back here, and it waits till it's completed, and then when it's completed, it will go in front, and so I completely missed the animation. So the idea there was um, to instead make a thread, and the thread had a sleep function. Uh, in our Kotlin coroutines, I believe we're gonna use delay instead of sleep, but it's the same concept. So it would be like, you know, really fast, sleep, 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 really, really fast. But every time the, the sleep ends, it's like wake up. Um, not really a legitimate function, but you know, it basically restarts the function. It kind of acts like a loop for our animation. So it could go, it's here, and then we sleep, and when it wakes up, it's here, and sleep, and wake up, it's here. And so if we make the delay just right, it looks like a smooth transition. So that was my first experience with a thread. Now, we're gonna be dealing with databases, not animations, but the, um, the idea is the same, is that we don't want the long delay of the database is in control now, and we've requested the data, and I don't have it, I don't have it, I don't have it. Meanwhile, the main thread is just spinning, and it, if it spins too long, maybe you're gonna, um, you're gonna bore the user or whatnot. Okay, so we don't wanna do that. Um, we do have a built-in thread in, um, in Android Studios. It is the main thread, it's automatically there. Everything that has to do with the user interface is, uh, has to be done through the main thread. And the main thread has, um, has no ability, it's, it's basically denied the ability to uh, do requests on the internet or access a database because those things are slow and we want the main thread to be responsible for things like button presses or scrolling or things like that. So um, the, that's where coroutines is going to come into play. Coroutines is uh, Kotlin's solution for defining work that is going to run asynchronously. So we're gonna define a couple of things here, um, a couple that are needed. We are we're gonna to have to have a coroutine builder. To run your code in a coroutine, you need a coroutine builder, and that's just a function that creates a new coroutine. Most coroutine builders execute this, the code inside of a coroutine immediately upon creation, and launch is the most commonly used coroutine builder, and we are going to be using it. But every coroutine builder needs to launch inside of a coroutine scope. The coroutine scope controls the setup and the cancellation of the coroutine, and it's actually gonna choose the thread to which you're gonna execute the code. So we have these things called coroutines, but there are really threads working behind the scenes. It's just the coroutine is responsible for picking the thread that you're gonna use. 
Now we have access to a uh, coroutine scope already. In view model, we have access to something called view model scope. We haven't used it yet, but we soon will. It's available the instant the view model is initialized and it's going to cancel any running coroutines when the view model is cleared from memory. So it's a good place to start putting in our asynchronous code. Uh, we're going to start the process by, well, actually, now that I think about it, the, the, uh, the, the Gradle needs to be fixed, but I think I'll do that off scene. I'll, I'll put uh, the code into the Gradle from the, uh, the first slides here, and I didn't comment on it, but, it, you know, always these are off by a little bit. Um, this 1.6.0, it's highlighting because, um, because it looks like there's a 1.70 that's available, but I tried it and 1.70 did not work. Uh, the book says for this line that you should use 2.4.1, uh, but uh, autocomplete 2.5.1 was available and it did work. So uh, I would set your Gradle up to um, those options instead. So I'll do that off camera, but then the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to wrap the creation of our crime data inside of a view model scope. So let's get that done. All right, I just put in the Gradle functions. It didn't take too long, but I believe it had to download these here. Uh, they um, were not available for auto completion. So uh, we'll see if it works in a second and as soon as we run our code for the first time. But now we are going to go wrap that uh, code that we saw inside of a scope coroutine. I, I mean a coroutine scope. So we're going to go into crime list view model. And inside of the init, we are going to go view model scope dot launch. Begin curly brace. And then we have some tabbing to do. And then this will end as our end brace for up here. And we'll give this guy its end brace. Okay. So for the launch, we probably have to import that. Alt Shift Enter. All right. Now, on its own, this, called, this code doesn't do much, but now that the coroutine has been started, you can invoke suspending functions within it. For example, you could make a delay, uh, which takes time in milliseconds as an argument. So let's put in a delay, and uh, if we're gonna do this, and it's kind of just an experiment to see how things are working, let's put in a tag. So we'll go up here to the top, private constant val, tag is equal to crime list view model. And right above where we started our view model scope, let's log that we are starting the init. Log dot D tag and then the message init starting and import this log. And then after the view model has launched, let's log again, log.d, the tag and the message is the coroutine has launched. Guess it likes double quotes, not single quotes. Okay. And then we will put in our delay. And we should see five seconds of, um, of the view not showing. We'll see if that happens. All right, Alt Shift Enter. Uh, let's see what import we got there. I believe that's right. All right, and then after the crimes, we'll put in a final log and then we'll run this. Log.t, put in our tag. 
and the message being loading crimes finished. Okay, let's run it. Let's go into the log cat. Okay, uh, we do have a problem with the gradle. All right, both of these should have X's. Let's try again, got a sync. Shouldn't take long this time. And we'll run it. Should be five second delay and then we should get our list now um, let's see five second delay we do have a five second delay okay and we could see that it's a five second delay because of the difference between the uh, the 46 and the 51 there uh, but notice that we do not have our list of dummy data and the reason why is because we have created a classic race condition. So the, um, the on create view got put into existence. It fired during that five second delay. So that shows that we do have uh, a coroutine working here, right? So, um, so this was able to fire after the view model had started but the view model was in the middle of the delay and the coroutine turns the, the, uh, the action, it, it, it turns permissions over to um, other entities and so the create view ends up getting called and the view has not yet been, well, the, the view has been populated but the data is in delay and it has not been created. So here's our view and it's simply blank. All right, so that's where we are going to leave our first video. And the next video, we are going to manage our coroutines using repeat on lifecycle. I'll see you in video two in a moment.